Right. So guys, I'm Sunet Tripathi. Uh, I'm the CTO and one of the founders here. Uh, we are going to talk about the VFlow part of the demo, basically, right? The VFlow is our SDN heritage. As the term says, it's dealing with flows, a lot of flows, and what's going on, and so on and so forth, right? So we'll go through a quick example of that, and then we'll follow up uh, on something else, right? So VFlow is a, um, you know, because internally, NetVisor is all built on flows, right? I mean, we are dealing with flows at every level, flows related to Mac learning, flows related to uh, L3, flows related to, you know, application level protocols, and so on and so forth. But what we do is we give a very open API, and things we pride ourselves on is the rate of flow creations, you know, how quickly can you dynamically program the network, and also the I.O., when you create a flow, you want to get stuff to your application, right? Um, that is something that we pay a lot of attention to. So let me, instead of going through <coughs> talking too much, just create something, right? So I'm going to do a vflow create. Uh, let's pick a name, name test one flow, right? Scope is a very interesting thing that we have. And if I hit the tab, you'll see what the scope means here, right? Again, remember we are a cluster fabric as well. So if you're running a single switch, obviously everything is local, you have only one switch, you're dealing with whatever you have, right? But in most cases, it gets very interesting when you're dealing with the top of the rack network, right? Let's say you have 10 racks or even five racks, you don't wanna go and trace cables, right? Take a very simple example. Um, you know, Robert is complaining that I don't know, my stuff is slow, it's not working, right? That's typically, I'm not making this up, that's how typically I go to network guys, that's typically how people come to the admins always. I don't know, it's not working, right? So, okay, you start with, Robert, what's the IP address you're using, or maybe his machine name, or whatever, whatever, right? And I don't wanna go and find out where he's plugged into, or which Wi-Fi access point is gonna, he's gonna use. I just wanna see what is going on. So I'm gonna use the scope fabric, right? I don't care where it is, I wanna see it right here, right? And we, we can pick a bunch of things. I'm gonna pick source IP, right? And maybe we'll use one of the IP of a machine, right? Again, like I said, you can pick a flow based on anything, right? You can be base it on physical address, physical ports, physical switch. You can base it on uh, MAC addresses, IP addresses, IP subnets, uh, application level stuff, TCP protocols, UDP protocols, ports, so on and so forth. I'm just using IP based flow, full qualified IP, it's a IP address because we are tracing a single machine. The next part that comes in is action, right? So if you look at the list of actions, there are a lot of actions, right? If we want to block this entire flow, all I need to say is drop right here. This flow is not going anywhere across the network. Robert, Robert will be stopped cold in his tracks, right? Not gonna do that to you, Robert, basically. Uh, but the other part you can do is redirect it anywhere. So we were talking about how do we deal with um, a large L2, we redirect flows where necessary, we can mirror stuff where necessary, and we can modify and re-inject it where necessary. We can change the VLAN, we can change the tunnel, we can set anything in any tunnel. So if you look at it, it's called the, you know, giant transmogrification of a flow. You build it in, you pull it in, maybe copy, maybe the entire flow, and mess with it any way you want, re-inject it back in the network, right? The action that's very useful is copy to CPU. This is where a lot of your security is built around, right? I'm not gonna impact the actual flow, I want to get a copy, right? And I want to get a copy of things that are interesting to me as I see new IP subnets, I wanna see a copy of those, right? I want to see deep into the packet what is going on, what kind of stuff is coming in, right? Maybe at some point I'm not interested anymore, I'll let it go, maybe sometime I get more interested in it because this IP subnet is coming from foreign lands and looks like they're doing something weird, so I'm gonna pull it into the, the system more and more, right? Are you considering taking that further in, in terms of monitoring? Because what we've been seeing this week is, is companies who know, who, who do flow networking well, yeah. are using it to do amazing things with analytics. So I'll show you some analytics apps that we have done ourselves, which show stuff at it, but we are also partnering up with people basically in the security space, because in the security space you need a lot of deep IP in terms of you know understanding, because these guys just looking at IP subnet and the, the connection signature can figure out 
oh, this is a bad guy here, right? So, so we provide all the plumbing and the control for them to come on our platform and take this. Then they apply the brains necessary to figure out what it is. But in terms of monitoring, we have quite a bit of stuff. And I'll show you in the next demo, basically, right? So action, copy to CPU. This is where our Fusion IO also comes in, because I can actually say, for audit purposes, we're going to log everything, right? Because Robert has lost a uh, formal complaint saying that his stuff doesn't work, and it's only his stuff doesn't work, right? So we're going to log all the packets here, right? So we hit it, flow create, we're done, right? So now I just want to see here on the network what is going on, right? And we immediately see that the packets are traversing Aquila 12 and Aquila 2, test flow, which port it comes in, what is the size of the packet, nanosecond level timestamp as the packets are coming through looks like it's a UDP um, source port desk port all that stuff is right here basically right I mean I can open another shell window somewhere and I can do SSH to that machine and you can you can see the snoop coming through right here basically right um, and, and, you know, it's the SSH port right now because I was doing SSH. It's a TCP connection. We saw UDP stuff earlier. It's visible right here. I don't know whose machine that was. I have no hooks into the machine. I have no hooks into the server side or the virtual machine side. We have hooks into the switch. We are seeing it right here, right? At any given time, I want to go and see what happened, really. So we go to uh, drop out of the CLI because I want to TCP dump this thing. Uh, and we go through NVOS log, no, VNet, uh, CD, PN, Fab, Blue. By the way, this is also shared over NFS, so you don't have to analyze it here because we are recording the raw TCP dump file. You can actually look through wherever you want, but we are going to just look at right here itself, right? So, what was our test one flow? Is, is this capturing full packets in, in the You dump? can choose. You can choose okay. headers. You can say full packets, whatever you want. You so can do that. Is there any limit on, you know, if you happen to choose a big flow, yes. is there any limit or is there any impact on doing that? Uh, so otherwise, it, yes, how long uh, We use the action right? copy to CPU. If we <coughs> had used the action to CPU, uh -huh. every packet would have come to us. It would not go anywhere. And then it's your responsibility to either re-inject or do whatever you want, right? So we use copy to CPU. We are not impacted the actual flow at all. Not even a single impact on it, right? It's all coming a copy here, right? Okay. So now, so how much flows can we plug in, basically? So typically, this is where on a higher-end systems with Sandy Bridge processors and heavy PCI, we can go into 10 gigabytes, basically. Right? Uh, yeah, that's what I'm trying to get a feel for. Is yeah. is because yeah. uh, uh, just because I've had other platforms where you know you, you throw a you throw a capture up or a span or whatever it is and suddenly you've got six gig going to a system that can handle four gig, yes. and now yeah, everything's toast. No, typical so. switch, <coughs> if you look at the ODM switch out there running with a simple, you know, uh, free scale process and all, if you can get 10 Mac, that's pretty much what you're going to get, right? But on our server switch line, you go into one U line, you can get into a few gig, maybe, you know, seven, 800 Mac. In the two U line, which are dual Sandy Bridge uh, processors, you get into 10 gigs rates, basically. The reason Fusion IO came in, because for audit purposes and a lot of time, for analytic reason, we are generating so much data. On SSDs, we couldn't get the fast enough IO ops, basically, right? So what ended up being that we put a Fusion IO in to actually write all the data consistently, because you want to do a synchronous write also, right? And then what we are finding out, a lot of people are, we are getting into the rack controller business with the 2U line, where people are like, oh, you got storage there. Anyway, you do mirror, and you do this, and you do that. You have enough compute and horsepower to run my entire OpenStack controller right there, right? So I can be the rack controller where I'm Pixie installing all the servers from you and spinning the VMs and all that kind of stuff. So we have that business as well. Again, like I said, the, the, the market is segmented. We can just do switching on a single box basis, in a commodity boxes, just providing programmability or an ease of use and economics, server economics. Then the range shifts towards the middle where a few thousand dollars more, but now you're getting more, you're getting the fabric capability, built-in analytics, and so on and so forth. And then the range shifts to our higher in line, basically, where now the cost is 
I mean the PCI based flash is not cheap and stuff like that basically right and that's where you are starting to see a lot more benefit and Rolf will go through some of the use cases and ROIs we are seeing in there but very simply TCP dump right minus R PCAP file so you can see right here that you know what what is the 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 same thing we are pulling is getting recorded here and we can actually record as much as you want right i mean we can pipe it to your own application and you can record it in any other format that you want you can actually run your security app and we inject it back all those things are possible <coughs> right and just so i understand because <coughs> and because you're uh, you're working on like a fabric basis. You don't. You didn't necessarily have to be on the specific switch that that host was connected to, right? You, just, you got it. That's a big part you of the. Do a switch. And any do any switch. And as long yep. as it's somewhere within the fabric, we'll see. That action takes, and you yep. can review it from where you are. Yep. Totally. You got it. So that you're, is. You're really. Ma you're managing the entire fabric. Yes. From any point, any administration point. B big part of our USB is to not trace cables, right? Right. Because as a startup, one of the things Robert and I found out that half the time we were spending in the server room tracing cables. So one of the things we very quickly did, how do we get ourselves out of the server room and actually back to our desks? So this became a big part of our USB. So with that as well, since you've got this fabric and say you've got 20 switches in that fabric, each one of those switches could be doing 10 gig, 10 gig plus of capture at a time. Yes. So you have this huge capture engine. Totally, totally, totally. You, 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 you got it. You got it. That's cool. <laughs>